Okay, well, we have a few people here and um, maybe we'll get a few more signing in. Um, but I will jump into things now for those of you who are here and uh, we'll get started. So um, I'd just like to start by thanking everyone for being here and joining us today. My name is Jen Bentley. I'm the Alumni Advancement Officer for the Faculty of Health. Um, so I work in alumni engagement and providing opportunities to connect students and alumni. Um, but I'd like to start today by acknowledging that much of the work of the University of Waterloo takes place on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabeg and Haudenosaunee peoples. Our main campus is situated on the Haldeman Track, the land granted to the Six Nations that includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. Our active work towards reconciliation takes place across our campuses through research, learning, teaching, and community building in a centralized within our Indigenous Relations Office if you are looking for more information. Um, so with that, I'm excited to welcome you to our final week of alumni office hours this term today featuring Diana Ho. Um, bringing alumni back to connect with our students is an important priority for both the faculty and uh, the broader university. Alumni help, help us to show students what's possible and share the successes that they have had and the stories um, uh, from their careers and life um, to help shine a light on the path for students that they could have um, in their futures. We, uh, this will be again the last week of office hours for this term, but the series will continue to be hosted in the spring term and the fall term um, and likely on a, a regular basis. So if anyone does have requests on any careers, um, that they are interested in, that they'd like to hear other speakers from. Um, I'd love for you to share that in the chat or you can send me an email sometime because um, I will be continuing to um, get these scheduled for uh, future terms. Um, so in order to make the most of this small group session, um, I'd like to ask everyone to turn on their cameras. Um, when, if you're comfortable, um, it just makes the conversation more personal, easier for Diana to speak to uh, a bunch of friendly faces as opposed to some blank screens. So I'd encourage you either now or once we get to the Q&A to turn on your camera um, and participate in the call. Um, and then I'll also invite students um, or participants, you can use the raise hand feature to ask any questions that you have. And we'll make this a really um, engaging conversation today. So with that, I'll introduce Diana. So she has worked in the events industry for over seven years now and counting. And it all started after her university career at Waterloo and landing a dream internship with a luxurious wedding planner in Toronto called Ashley Linson Events. Um, this internship opened doors to new opportunities as she finished her one year postgraduate certificate for event management at Conestoga College. Um, Diana is now growing her team at Ada while building new event policies and structure into organization and planning Ada's annual all employee incentive trip for 600 plus employees. That's a lot of people. Big event. Um, so I skipped over a bunch of other thing, jobs she had in the middle, but I'm going to pass it over to Diana and she will fill in the full story for all of you. Hi everyone. Um, thanks for having me. Um, Jen, it's been such an honor to even come back and speak with like undergraduate students. Um, I had such a great experience at the University of Waterloo. Um, Ali, right when you turned your camera on, I was like, that background is giving me flashbacks of when I was living in university. Um, I don't know, are you, are you living at V1? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that is totally <laughs> the backdrop that I used to sit in. Um, but that's so wild, I love that. And I'm happy to see that everyone's back on campus um, studying um, and back into the office. Um, but like Jennifer mentioned, so I really started off my career after I graduated from the University of Waterloo um, and I got my internship. But before getting that internship, um, I graduated from the university with a rec and leisure um, degree and I minored in sports business. 
Um, and one of the things that I really fell in love with while I was at the university was actually studying gerontology. And I love old people. And I think that's what kind of stemmed me into, you know, taking a leap of faith and working more on the therapeutic rec side. Um, and I actually worked at a long-term care for about eight months before um, I got into my events career. So I, while I was working at the long-term care, um, I was actually interning for Ashley Linson events at the same time. This was an unpaid internship back in the day. Um, I don't think you hear about unpaid internships that much now, um, but it was honestly the best experience of my life, which really led me to, you know, different parts of where I am today. So that stemmed into, you know, working at different sectors within the events industry. I think when, you know, people think about events, it's always just about party planning, but there's more to it. So if you're into sports, um, there's, you know, stuff that you could work at at MLSC if you're based in Toronto. So doing more sports events. Um, there's also the non-for-profit side where you could work with organizations, you know, planning events that are important um, based off of cause. And there's also like the corporate side, which is more the private practice side. Um, and that's really where I am today. So when I, after working as a wedding planner, um, I started working at a venue called Hall and Marsh Wineries, um, where I was handling more of the ongoing weddings and events that took place at the Vineyard Estate. Um, but that built my career into my next steps of going into more of the hospitality side of it, where I was working as a venue coordinator, but also, um, you know, working with really big clients that I never really thought I would ever work with, like Mercedes-Benz, Honda. Um, I worked with Invictus Games, um, and I worked for the people who are into the sports teams. I also worked with the Argos as well, while I worked at Oliver and Bun Cheney events. Um, and I had other clients, like corporate clients, like Deloitte. Um, RBC, all the big banks. Um, and by building a really great networking experience, that's how I landed a job with Deloitte as a national um, event specialist. And that gave me the opportunities to, you know, travel around Canada, hosting partner meetings across Canada, um, and meeting like and working with so many different people, um, which led me to where I am today. Um, now I work for a company called Ada Support Inc. We are a tech-based company. Um, it's new for me. I'm new in the tech sector, um, but it's definitely something that's super intriguing and exciting because Ada is a company that builds AI chatbots. For those who don't know what that is, if you do any online shopping, whenever you go on a website, you always have this little chatbot that pops up and they'll ask you how your day is going. That's pretty much what my company is organizing right now. And we are a fully remote company. So I work from home, um, but I get the opportunity of traveling around the world for site visits um, and planning our CEOs like next big events um, because I purely plan internal events right now for them. But that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Um, I know that there are a few questions I will probably like go more in depth of my roles. Um, but if anyone has any questions right now, feel free to let me know. Um, I'm pretty much an open book here. That's great. So um, if everyone wants to turn on their cameras and uh, anyone wants to go first with a question for Diana, please feel free to raise your hand and uh, we can jump into some Q&A. Don't all go at once. <laughs> I can go first. Um, hi, my name's Kellen. Um, I'm doing a tourism development major and looking at doing an events minor. Um, and my question is, I was just wondering if you did any event planning for more like outdoor recreation tourism based um, events. Like I know you said you get to travel a lot, which in a way is kind of tourism because you'll be going to places or uh, planning it from afar, but kind of specifically in that, yeah, like that outdoor natural environment sense. So that's actually a really great question. So that's actually another sector that I've never really um, participated in. Um, I do get to travel a lot with my job, um, which is really great. And I think when you're planning, so for example, I was planning for an event in Mexico that was supposed to take place in February. Um, that didn't work out because of Omicron. Um, as a business kind of perspective, we had to postpone it. And so now we're doing it in 2023. Um, but in terms of like a tourism aspect, like I would say 
for me in planning, I'm based in Toronto. So it's not like I have to, I get to fly out to Mexico every single day whenever I need anything. So working abroad with vendors can get quite difficult. Um, but it's a really great opportunity because when you're traveling out and you're meeting so many different faces and meeting different vendors, you never know where those connections go. Um, for example, like if you are looking at, you know, booking a resort um, that's out in Mexico, it's not just a specific resort that's their brand name. They're usually tied with other uh, like brand names that may have resorts that are based in, I don't know, Costa Rica or other functionalities that can broaden that opportunity for you. Um, but I have never worked in the agricultural side or the tourism side. I do know a lot of friends who do work in that aspect and um, they do more of the, um, what's that? What is that sport called again? It's, so my friend works out in Ottawa. It's like, can, it's not canoeing, kayaking, rapid water or something like that. Um, but they, they do that as tourism and they graduate from the rec program. Um, and that's what they do. They go around, they, you know, have a full guided tour for everyone. Um, and I think there are really great opportunities for people who are looking in tourism. I could definitely connect you with them. Um, if you have those, like if you have questions, but I unfortunately don't have any tourism or agricultural side. Um, the most for me is just traveling around the world for sites. Thanks. And I think, yeah, we'd love, I'd love to know who that contact is, but yeah. I'm pretty sure Kellen was also nodding. She uh, would love to get connected to that individual as well. So that'd be great, Diana. Definitely. I'll definitely connect you with them afterwards. Thanks. Okay. Does anyone else have a question? Um, I'm, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about like what your what kind of events you're planning in more detail, maybe what your day-to-day -day is like in your in this um, new position in the tech event space. Yeah, absolutely. So a day in my life at Ada, um, it's, it's very different in the tech space because especially if you're not an established tech company yet, you're really working from the ground up. So a lot of what I'm doing right now is I'm building my team at Ada and I'm working on, um, you know, setting budgets and setting policies in place for when we are hosting offsite events and when we are also having, you know, employees travel around the world um, just to do meetups. Um, but additional to that, it's like I'm, I'm planning all these upcoming events for internal employees. So my role specifically is um, an event manager for employee experience and culture. So I focus purely on our employees, which we are a growing company right now. Um, every week we have about 10 new hires joining us. Um, and, you know, they're you're planning for, you know, whether it's smaller events that can be done virtually um, or larger scale events like the 600 person event that I'm planning right now. Originally it was based in Mexico. Now it's going to be in Toronto for August, but you're, you have to hand, you're pretty much like a project um, planner. So you're delegating the work. Um, so I'm constantly in meetings telling, you know, working with different people on our team, whether it's security, whether it's IT to make sure that the platforms that we're using um, are, use, are doable with our functionalities um, and also meeting with vendors in person. So for our Toronto event, I've been doing a lot of site visits um, that includes like visiting the venue that we're planning to host it at. Right now we're looking at Stack Market. If you're familiar with Toronto, um, we're looking at buying it out for a full week. So it'll kind of be like an A to takeover. And on top of that, I'm sourcing hotels for over 300 employees for those who are traveling in. And then Additional to that, I'm also attending conferences. So because now the world is opening up, um, in the next few weeks, I'm actually traveling out to Nashville. And the week after, I'm going to Las Vegas for some trade shows. Um, but in my role, because we're still quite a new company, it's really about building that name and reputation right now. Um, so it's a lot of back-to-back -back meetings, putting out flyers, um, but it's a really, it's a captivating job because you get to see something from the beginning and then on the actual day of the event, you kind of see like what your vision is and how it came through um, and seeing it real life in person. Um, so that's pretty much my everyday fighting, putting out fires. Awesome. 
Uh, looks like someone put a question in the chat. So yeah. Megan asked, do you have any volunteer recommendations besides uh, long-term care and retirement residents? Yeah. Um, so when I was at the University of Waterloo, I volunteered with uh, Best Buddies. Um, it, it doesn't really have anything to do with event management, but I do think that you know, volunteering for any type of organization really builds um, personal skills and also um, just being confident to like step out of your comfort zone, meeting new people and being empathetic. Um, that really kind of, you know, geared me in a way of being able to reach out to people and talking to individuals like yourself today. Um, on top of that, in terms from like an events perspective, I also volunteered at um, Oktoberfest. KW is so well known for Oktoberfest. They have so many big events that take place every single year. Um, but I solely focused on working as an event, per, like a producer um, assistant, um, while helping them, you know, managing their Blooming Affair uh, fashion show, if you're familiar with that one, um, which is super fun. Every year they have a different theme. You're working with, you know, Kitchener locals um, and, you know, supporting so many great causes. Um, but keep an eye out there. Like even the city of, if you're in Waterloo or Kitchener, um, the city of Kitchener, the city of Waterloo, they host so many different activities. And also even at like your local YMCA, if you volunteer through that, there's so many opportunities for you to help out with events. Um, and then lastly, the biggest volunteer opportunity was probably with the University of Waterloo. Um, I, I volunteered with them. I, I mean, I wouldn't really call it volunteer, but um, I was helping a lot for orientation. So for the health faculty, um, I started off as, you know, just a leader at first, and then that kind of grew into doing more of the event focus based um, activities. So like planning out the full agenda. And then my last year um, at the university, I actually sat on the feder. Is it still called the feds? Is that what you guys call it still for the Federation of Students? They just, they have renamed recently. It's, uh, oh gosh, LUSA. <laughs> and now I'm trying to remember what it oh. stands for. Waterloo Undergraduate Student Association. Love that. Yes, got yeah. it. Love that. So <laughs> I volunteered with them um, in my last year, and that's when I was doing more of the orientation cross campus. So that was planning like the larger scale events. Like, I don't know if you do it anymore, but like Monte Carlo, the yoga party, the toga party that we had every year. Um, but that really helped a lot um, in terms of volunteering that got me where I am today. Yeah. I love that. It's funny because orientation is the reason that I got into events also. Um, and I'm just going to quickly plug when it comes to getting like real event experience, also considering doing the REC 312 practicum. Uh, for example, like I just found um, a student who's doing the event minor um, that's going to fill uh, a practicum role with me planning for alumni weekend in the spring term. So there are um, opportunities like that. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, definitely connect with Sarah Houston and let her know that you're interested in getting more experience in that way. Um, yeah. Guys, Sarah Houston is going to be your best friend. She is the queen of rec. And I mean, everyone in rec remembers her name, but definitely set time with her and have discussions with her because she helped me so much in my undergraduate career. Um, and even just like a good person to talk to when you're running into any problems for university. Yeah, she is great. Okay, who else has questions? Amelia, I was wondering if you could expand a little bit on your experience as a wedding planner. Yeah, for sure. Um, wedding planning is actually my favorite type of event to plan. Um, it's you, it's nice when you get to work with clients who care so much about an event. Um, it's very different from when you're working in corporate event because, you know, corporate event, it's like it happens every year. But for a wedding, it's like it's a once in a lifetime thing. Um, it can get very stressful because it is tied to a once in a lifetime thing. So working with your clients, like you have to be able to manage that. Um, as a wedding planner, there are different types of it. So you can be a full-time planner to start off. 
You could also be, um, you know, a partial, and then you could also be a month of, which is really just handling like the day of coordination um, and seeing everything go through through the timeline on the day of. Um, aside from that, you're also going to be like a part-time therapist for your bride and the families, I'll be honest. You're, if that's something you're interested in, um, you need to make sure that like you are on call 24 seven, you will be getting phone calls, you'll be getting text messages and it'll be over some of the smallest little tedious things. But again, it's very important to them. Um, it's a very creative world because so many different clients have different visual ideas of how they want their day to look like. And at the end of the day, like you are their go-to person who's going to advocate them. And you're going to be working with all the vendors to make sure that everything's kind of working through. Um, with wedding planning, um, it's fun. I've I've met really great vendors and I actually just got married four weeks ago. Um, so I think with the vendors that I met, I built really great relationships with them, um, which really helped me in planning my own um, because you know the best of the best in the industry. Um, it could, thank you, Amelia. It could also be a very cutthroat environment just because there are more and more wedding planners that are coming into the industry right now. Um, one thing that I've noticed is after my postgraduate studies career at Conestoga College, a lot of my colleagues, like a lot of my, um, I guess like colleagues in a sense, who weren't able to secure a job with the company, they started out branching out and starting their own company. So if that's something that you want to do and you are, let's say an entrepreneur that wants to start your own business, wedding planning is definitely the way to go because you become your own boss and you're able to excel and to build relationships that way. Um, but it's a really fun experience. If you like the luxurious side, if you love being a part-time like therapist um, and you love talking to people, wedding planning is the way to go um, because you, you get to see all the beautiful things. You get to see the nice menus. You get to see the florals. You get to see the decor. Um, and if you're someone on the creative side, I definitely say to go that way. Um, for me, I didn't, I moved away from wedding planning um, only because I like the corporate side and I like the tech side now. Um, it's very different because when you're working in a corporate and a tech setting, it's no longer a personal event. It's more an event that you're trying to cater to a group. Um, and they're always larger scaled. And I think for me, I'm always looking for that next challenge, which is why like planning for 600 people sounds like it's a very big thing, but it gets me excited because I'm not just doing smaller intimate weddings or, you know, 250 people weddings anymore. Um, now I get the opportunity to, you know, work with like larger budgets, um, and larger clientele, which is super exciting. That's awesome. Thanks. Um, I feel like I want to hear all the details about your wedding now, but we'll save that for later. Um, I'll send you photos. <laughs> wonderful. I love a good wedding. Um, just looking through some of the questions that were submitted. Um, so I guess when you were in school, the event minor didn't exist. Um, so I'm not sure... I was talking to a student the other day about whether or not additional schooling would be necessary after um, the minor, but why, why did you choose to do um, event management at Conestoga um, after completing like your rec and sport biz minor? Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, I didn't get the opportunity of having a minor for event planning. If that was something that was a part of my program back in my days, I would jump right into it. Um, and I think that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do a, a post-undergraduate um, studies after. Um, I, I feel like now, now the work environment, like the job environment has definitely changed a lot. I feel like back then it was very much about like what you had um, on paper, like having your degree, having that postgraduate or having a master's degree afterwards. Whereas now I am finding that a lot of companies are taking a leap of faith with um, employees who, you know, have the experience or are hard workers, and they're really looking for people who fit their culture. 
Um, but the reason why I chose Conestoga after university was I wanted more learning. I think I had, I think it was rec 311. Was that the event management course that they previously had? I'm not too sure. I'm not sure what the code yeah. was, but my, my memory is also not the greatest, but, um, I think it was rec 311. That was the only event management course. And I wasn't in the co-op stream. I remember when that course was offered, it was only offered during, um, the spring term. So I actually ended up staying in Waterloo that summer just for that one course. Um, and I didn't feel like I learned enough. Like, I, I think I always knew that when you go to college, you get that hands-on experience. And I think that was one of the things that I wanted the most. Um, given that when you're in university, you do get, I think in rec, we're lucky enough to get some hands-on experience with the practicum. Um, but a lot of the rest of it is really just like studies and like learning modules. Um, so going to college, I was able to, you know, get that experience. There's also somewhat of like an internship or like a co-op term that you do for four months. Um, and you meet like really great people who have the same mindset as you and like what they want to do. And you kind of like feed off of each other's energy um, and push each other. One of my biggest regrets, I would say, is actually doing the program at Conestoga College. During that time, I wanted to stay in university because all my friends were still in co-op um, in the co-op stream. So they didn't graduate yet. And I wanted to live with them. But I think now if I were to take a step back, I probably would have taken my college program in Toronto. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because Toronto has, it's such a larger base for the industry. You're surrounded by, you know, so many big financial companies. Um, there were so, like speaking with my friends who actually took the program in Toronto, they had more opportunities for their pro, um, their co-op program versus me when I was doing it at Conestoga. Mm -hmm. um, when I was which at are, which program are you? George Brown's program? Uh, yeah, George Brown um, has it. Um, York also has it as well, but I think it's a specialization in something. I think if you want to do sports, sports event management is mainly for York. I don't know if that's changed. Um, but I think like I probably would have excelled a little bit more. But again, I feel like things happen for a reason. If I did go to Toronto, who knows where I would be today and what I'd be doing now. Um, but I think at that moment, I probably wanted to have more exposure to the industry. Um, but yeah, like when I was at Conestoga College, my co-op position, I landed a position for an events and marketing assistant at the Cowan Insurance Group, where I got more of like that corporate side of it in the field. Um, but I, I would say that I'm more of like a city person. So if you're looking for that exposure, definitely like go to a larger city like Toronto, um, to meet those event professionals and to get that experience. Mm -hmm. Um, similar to what I'm often sharing about the Waterloo alumni network. Um, I took the George Brown program, the sport and event marketing one year program, and it has a similar reputation where like you become part of that network and it's very large, especially in the event um, industry. So yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. I feel like you've worked in so many different um, industry, like areas of events. Um, are there any highlights from uh, some of the work you did at, um, you're talking about some of the larger corporate events that you planned, but what was that when you were at with Oliver and Bonacini? Oliver and Bonacini, yeah. Um, so for people who aren't familiar with Oliver and Bonacini, they are, um, they own a lot of restaurants across Canada and they also own venues. Um, so I sat as an event specialist on their team and I was doing events at one of their large properties, which was actually called the Arcadian. Um, it's right across at the Eden Center. Um, it's like a really nice like view where you could look um, across the Nathan Phillips Square. Um, but I worked with clients, like I mentioned, like Honda, um, Mercedes-Benz. Um, but one of the biggest, I think one of the best events that I've ever held with them was actually working with Hudson's Bay. So we were pretty close, like within proximity of where my office was to the Eden Center, Hudson's Bay. And every year they do the window unveiling for the holiday season. 
I'm not sure if you've been downtown before where you see that big window. They usually have huge nutcrackers and like it's just very bright and they play music. Um, but I had the opportunity of working with Hudson's Bay and this is forever, hands down, the best event I've ever held. Um, but I was able to do the unveiling for them that year. And that was the year when Mariah Carey actually came to do the unveiling. Um, so it was pretty wild. I remember I was setting up her hospitality rider because every celebrity or like someone who's a bigger name, even a band that you would meet, they usually have a hospitality rider of like what they want on the list of like, I need 12 Cokes. I need, you know, a pack of Mentos, like they'll, they'll list a bunch of things. But I remember specifically getting Mariah Carey's rider. And I was like, this is so surreal. Like, I never thought that I would ever be in the presence of Mariah Carey. Um, what did she ask for? I don't even remember. I, I remember it was very, there was definitely a bottle of champagne. And she also asked for, um, I remember it was like cold throat tea, which at that time I was like, what is cold throat tea? Like, where am I going to find this? Um, but it was an extensive list. That's all I remember. But knowing that it was Mariah Carey, she's a bougie girl and we'll let her do that. <laughs> That's so fun. Um, just looking back to the group, does anyone else have some questions they'd like to ask? Anything specific about, uh, oh, Ben's got one. Ben, I'll let you go ahead. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I'm Ben, um, 3A. Uh, rec and sports business. Um, I was just wondering, um, right now my co-op, um, I'm on, I'm doing social media and I've kind of been thinking about like, how do you like build community online? And you're working at like a tech company and you're like saying you're doing employee experience and employee culture. And like, you've, you've kind of hinted at that you've had to cancel some events, obviously over the last couple of years. I was just wondering like, what does that even look like? Like, how do you build like a good employee experience or a good employee culture online? That's actually a really great question. Um, at our company, we're still trying to figure that out. And we strive on having a really great culture. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the platform called Slack, but that's where we do all our, you know, internal communications. Um, and every day we're trying to, you know, we're trying to promote ourselves as a company. Um, and we're trying to retain our employees as well. So by building a really good employee experience, it's like, we have to have that ongoing engagement. So it can be as simple as, you know, asking a question of like, who got their coffee today? And to, you know, to get people to kind of engage. I think it's the same thing with social media. Um, I, I don't know to what extent you're doing on social media. Um, but like, if you're putting a post on Instagram, if you're just putting like a caption, that's like, not, it's just like one sided no one can really engage and like they, they'll probably only like your photo whereas if you probably put a question people could respond to it and you're going to get more engagement through that and more conversation um at ada what we do for employee experience it could be something so simple like you know since we are working remote and we're not in person where we're in an office setting um we'll do for halloween we'll do you know weekly contests we'll, we'll on monday we'll feature a Spotify playlist, which is like a Halloween themed one. And then on the Tuesday, we'll post a photo of um, a large jar of candy, which I counted every single one of the M&Ms in the jars. And I posted it online. And I was like, guess how many M&Ms are in here? And the closest guess wins a certain prize. And that's how you up engagement. And everyone's, you know, everyone wants to win stuff. Um, at a, Like at a tech company, the benefit is that, you know, there is money and there's funding for stuff like that so that you can create these sorts of engagement. Um, but I think it could be something like so simple. Um, for Mexico, for example, we had to cancel the trip. It was definitely very hard for us to share that, but you need a core team to be able to draft up your communication. So I work very closely with our communications manager. Um, I also work really closely with our senior VP of operations um, who makes all the, the calls on these. Um, and you know, when you're sending registration out to register for the actual event, you already have 
um, all the participants emails for you to notify them if they cannot can like if the events no longer happening and to let them know that you know it's not that we're canceling the event as a whole we're only postponing it to a later time because we care more about your health and safety right now um, especially from a company's perspective because at our company like our employees are number one the only way for us to succeed is because of our employees. And I think our CEO really strives on that um, and showcases that to everyone, which is why I think a lot of people love working for our company um, and are still sticking around after a few years. Um, but I was also gonna say, I think I shared this with Jen um, previously, but our company is always hiring. So if like, you know, if you're looking for a co-op position or anything like that, um, we do open up co-op positions too. Um, so feel free to always reach out to me if you're looking for something or even if you need like guidance on, um, you know, other jobs, I'll definitely have connections that I could put you guys um, with and just to have like, you know, a coffee chat and see where things go because you never know where networking can take you. Um, talking about that is how big is your event team? Like, are there more roles beyond you? Are you hiring any new event roles or what does the event team look like? Yeah, so um, right now I am a team of one. I'm growing my, my team right now. Um, I, I'm letting, I'm posting soon, um, but working internally with our talent team to source um, those individuals. Um, but I am looking to hire within, from now until the end of the year, I'm looking to hire five event specialists to sit under my role, um, two being a senior event specialist and then three being a junior. Um, so really looking for someone who's willing to work hard. I think when you're in the events industry, for you to succeed, you need to be someone who can like get your hands dirty and like you're willing to grind and do the work, um, because that really shows, even if people don't tell you, it shows at the end of the day. Um, but within my organization, we have two teams. So there is myself who's handling more of the employee experience side. And then I also have another colleague who's an event manager handling more of the marketing and client facing events. So these client facing events would be, you know, again, on the marketing side where you're going to trade shows, um, you're trying to bring business back into the company and you're hosting all those virtual webinars um, to talk more about Ada and to promote them. So there's always two sides of events to every company. Um, just depends on, you know, what you're more interested in and what you want to do. Well, thanks. Good tip for everyone who, is anyone, I don't know what um, year you are all in, but is anyone graduating this year? No, not yet. Okay. Is everyone interested in like doing an events role? Yeah. That's awesome. Allie, what kind of events do you want to do? Um, I like wedding planning. That's kind of like what I've been in, but I'm kind of looking all over to see what I enjoy the most. Yeah. I would definitely recommend to, um, what year are you in right now? You're, are you in first year? Yeah, I'm only in my 1B, so I've got okay. some time. <laughs> yeah, even like, I don't know, I don't know if you're in your, co if you're in a co-op stream or not, but reach out to like sometimes wedding planners. This is how I got my internship, to be honest. I got it through Instagram because a wedding planner posted on, like made a post saying that they were hiring for an intern. And I just sent her a DM and was like, I'm interested and that led to me sending her my resume, which at that time was just my university staff and working at the mall um, and then having a phone conversation. So now that wedding season is starting to pick up, especially because like, you know, COVID is kind of ramping down. Um, there are going to be a lot of wedding planners who are probably going to be looking for assistance. Um, and I think that would be a really great opportunity. You never know like when to start, but starting now you get to be exposed to you know, how events are, learning about trends. Um, and I think for all of you, if you're interested in like just keeping on trend with what new events are taking place and what the next big thing is, always look on, um, there's a website called BizBash, which literally gives you all the top tips. It's like, it's like a BuzzFeed for event planners. Um, I'll link it in True. here. Yeah, subscribe to those emails. 
Yeah. We get a lot of them, but they always have something helpful and interesting to read. Yeah. And they, they have the coolest events that they feature that give you, you know, a more creative side and a better eye to things. Um, but it's so cool even to see like different properties around the world and like what the new venue will be like. Um, it's super exciting. Yeah, now I'm just thinking back to all of the cool things I have seen in the past <laughs> few weeks. <laughs> um, let's see, what else should we explore? Um, we talked about tips for um, jobs. Sorry, I'm like <laughs> blanking on what else we can should go through, but um, yeah, networking tips are great, Diana. Um, any other like event related companies to watch for, or like even people to follow? I don't know if there are event professionals on Instagram that are are good follows, um, like in Toronto or. Yeah, it, it depends on what kind of events you're into. I think a lot of the event planners that I follow are mainly wedding planners, um, just because like weddings are always going to be on trend. And even if you're doing a corporate event, I find that corporate events tend to take a lot of the trendy things that happen um, in the wedding industry. Um, I don't really have anything for sports. I feel like one person, I mean, Jen, I told you about this one person, Russell, who was like the celebrity of my class, um, who went into like sports. Now he works for, he worked for the Raptors and now he's like somewhere in the States. Um, but it's just like, you know, you never know where your career is going to take you. Um, I definitely think if you want to stay on trend, it's like find those people to follow. I could definitely provide you with a list of people to follow afterwards. Um, just so you could stay on track. But even if you take a look at BizBash, they usually have all the social media links um, for planners, for vendors, um, for you to take a look at. Um, but yeah, I think like one of the things that, I think one of the questions that a student asked was, um, how did you know that this career was the right path for you? And any advice for undergraduates to figure out um, and how to work towards the future? Um, I just wanted to kind of like mention this. It's just like, you can have a goal right now and a timeline of what you want to do. Um, but one thing that I've learned these past two years, especially during COVID, is that, you know, things happen for a reason. And in life, it's like you just learn to like pivot no matter like what happens, um, because that's just like your natural instinct. Um, I think for me, it's like I never really had a right career path. I, I think like I knew I wanted to do events since I was in grade 12. Um, I planned my high school prom. I don't know if any of you guys did, um, but I planned my high school prom. And I think that's when I was like, well, like, this is pretty cool. I can, you know, have a project from the beginning, have all these ideas, and then actually see it play out on the big day um, and actually visualize it. I think that's what really impacted me to grow my career. Um, but I was like so dead set on, you know, maybe I'll do this for the rest of my life and become an event planner. But then, you know, there was a side of learning about gerontology and working at a long-term care afterwards. So you never know like what doors are going to open up for you. Um, but I'm always someone who's like, you know, take on those new challenges and like try to explore those doors and see what's behind there. Because just because you're entering one door, it doesn't mean that the other door is closing on you. There's always an opportunity for you to go back to it. Um, during COVID, um, this was actually one thing that I haven't shared with you all yet is, um, when COVID hit, I was working at Deloitte and I was actually planning a huge Ontario partner meeting, um, at a venue. We had about, you know, I think we had about 400 partners who flew in for that day. And I remember getting a call from my mom, not even from like a colleague, but it was my mom saying the government is shutting things down. And she's like, what is going on with your event? Um, and I remember I was just like scrambling. At that point, I think everyone was already there um, and we started to move on. But after that event, 
all the events were pretty much shut down. Like the pandemic stopped the event industry. And it was by far like the most heartbreaking thing, because I think even now you're noticing that some hospitality workers are still trying to struggling to find a job. Um, and it's hard because things are only slowly opening up right now. Um, but, you know, the pandemic affected my job as well. So in September of 2020, my entire team at Deloitte got let go. And I think that was like the most devastating part of my life where I'm like, okay, I worked so hard to get to where I am right now. What am I going to do next? Um, but I think there's an instinct in any in everyone's like, like minds to just pivot and to find something new. So what I did was I'm like, you know what, I'm going to put events on the back burner and I'm going to go try something new. So I decided to actually go to, I, I got a job at Shopify and I worked as an account executive for sales. I was selling a tech product that I had no clue what it was. And I was like, I'm just going to go with it and see how it works. Um, and I did that for six months. I was actually really enjoying it because the tech industry is also a very different industry. It's a lot of young individuals who are so passionate and just want to rise each other up. And I think that's why I really liked it. Um, but six months later, I actually got a call from Ada and this opportunity came out of nowhere. And this is why I'm here today. So my event store never closed. There was always an opportunity for me to go back, but it's just like, don't get set up on timelines and get so gung-ho on wanting to do something and pursue something because things happen for a reason and it always works out at the end of the day. Um, I think it's good to have passion. Um, events is a really passionate industry to be in. We're a very small but mighty group. Um, and I think from what I was saying before, it's like networking is so important because everyone ends up knowing each other. It's all about word of mouth and we all see each other all the time at different industry events. Um, and I think it's just like, it's important to put yourself out there and like message those LinkedIn people. If you're interested in someone's career, reach out to them and you never know where that's going to go. Like I got an internship through a DM on Instagram. <laughs> it's true. The whole world of social media has opened up so many new opportunities and ways to connect with people that before you would send in your resume and hope that you'd hear back. Um, but now you can take extra steps to just go right to the source and say, hey, I applied to this job. I'd love to chat. Yeah, exactly. Megan said, everyone recommends organizations in Toronto. I'm comfortable driving anywhere except for Toronto. What was slash is your form of transportation? Oh, Megan, where do you live right now? Are you in Waterloo? I currently live in Heidelberg, which is just outside of Waterloo. So I like I could park in Waterloo and take the GRT or the GO train or bus. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I actually drive into the city um, when I lived in Waterloo. Um, but I'll be honest, I to now, like I go to Toronto all the time. I'm still very scared of driving in downtown traffic. Um, they're like different human beings who drive down there. But also, um, I think you get used to it. You Again, it's like you get out of your comfort zone. But um, alternatively, the other way is to take the train into the city. Um, the GO train is a really great option. I know that it's pretty limited when you're traveling from Toronto to Waterloo. I think like they only have it during like end of work hours. I don't know if that's changed because of COVID. Um, but when I first started driving to Toronto, it was because I had to do weddings downtown when I was assisting for my first internship. Um, I just got my G license and I don't know how I passed my G license because they never asked me to parallel park and Toronto is all about parallel parking. So it was definitely a shock. Um, but I, I now know how to parallel park. You just have to step out of your comfort zone sometimes and you never know where it's going to take you. Um, but definitely, if you're not comfortable with driving, I would say maybe start off with, I don't know if it's like having a friend or a family member drive down with you a few times um, or taking that public transportation. Um, my, like the only thing to consider is if you are planning events that's in Toronto, um, the hours are very long. So like you might be staying downtown for a very long time, whereas if you're trying to commute back into Waterloo afterwards, um, there might not be that many options. 
um, to consider, but it's never a bad thing to test the waters first and see how it goes. And I think the other thing I would say to you, Megan, is that there's lots of great event opportunities in Waterloo as well. So yeah, you don't, you don't have to go to Toronto or, or you can be like me and you can try Toronto out and decide that you don't actually like living in Toronto and come back to Waterloo. And, you know, there's lots of, um, opportunities and events here with all of the tech companies. Um, like Diana mentioned before, Oktoberfest is huge. Um, a great way to um, start volunteering in events, like you mentioned. And um, yeah, like there's Communitech, tons of nonprofits. Um, there's lots, lots of still event opportunities in this area as well. And another great thing about Waterloo right now is um, because it's such a hot spot for tech, they're opening a lot more venues in the KW area, um, which is a really great option um, or even opportunity. I don't know if it's like co-op opportunities or even after your undergraduate studies um, to get a job with them because just because you're working at a venue, it doesn't mean you're not planning events. You're still considered an event professional, um, but it's just a different side of it. And I learned the most when I worked at Oliver and Bonaccini working through an event as a venue specialist, because not only was I a professional and I knew everything about the facility, I worked very closely with like the chefs and the hospitality team, um, where you're able to design menus and you're able to, you know, actually figure out what your client wants and to have that executed for them on the day of. Um, so yeah, like to Jen's side, there are a lot of opportunities and the university too. They do so many events. It's true. It's true. And uh, another plug for like co-op jobs that are event related, there are a ton of event co-op positions on campus um, as well and great opportunities to plan events in different capacities for different audiences, whether it's students, alumni, um, through athletics also, um, lots of, lots of chances for that. Um, yeah. Great. Um, we haven't heard from Natalie or Amelia asked a question earlier. Just wanted to check in if either of you have any other questions about, I think, all of the different areas of events that we've covered today. <laughs> Cool. Um, did you have something else, Diana, you were going to say? No, I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> um, maybe you can tell us um, just like what your favorite part of planning, like in planning, event planning, what's your favorite part? Is it like the beginning, the end, being creative? You know, what keeps you going planning events every day? <laughs> uh, mine's definitely the creative side. Um, being able, I love flowers. I love decoration. Um, I'm someone who like, I don't know if you go to events and you see like a photo booth or an activation or anything like that, that is like my go-to, like my eyes go straight to that. Um, because I think visuals are so important. So definitely right now in my role, working with my brand team is probably my favorite because we're doing all the aspects of like designing the logo of our events, designing, you know, how banners would look like and how the agenda pieces would look like as well. Um, but definitely the creative side. And then the next thing is on the day of when I'm actually executing. Um, but to be fair, it's like, it's hard work. And sometimes I think for you, Ali, if you want to go into wedding planning, when you're an event planner, you are on an adrenaline, like an adrenaline rush where you don't even realize what time and day it is. Um, I would go for 12 hours sometimes working an event and I wouldn't eat anything. Like I would take two sips of water, but it's like, I have this like superpower that comes out of me where for some reason I'm on that rush where I could grind really hard. Um, it's not a good thing. Always carry granola bars on you. Everyone who does events, keep them in your car. I have so many boxes in my car. Um, but I think it's like, yeah, the visual side and then like the actual day of and seeing everything happen. Um, and then you put out fires. You run into all these things and you plan for the plan Bs and the Cs. Um, and it's just like so relaxing once you're done. You kick your feet off and you just relax afterwards. I'm usually in a coma after doing an event. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. That day is my favorite day. Yeah. Ask any of my coworkers. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, uh, we're getting close to the end of time. I think Ben still wants to um, maybe take a quick screenshot for social media. Is that right, Ben? Yeah, is now a good time? <laughs> yes, I think that would be good. Awesome, okay, well, yeah, as, as uh, I mentioned earlier, I do social media for the rec department. So I'm just gonna grab a quick, screenshot of uh, everyone who's comfortable's face so we can kind of put it in a bit of a social media post on twitter so yeah if you're comfortable you can leave your camera on or turn it on and i'll just grab a quick screenshot of a virtual photo group photo of you please um so yeah um i'll just kind of count down from three and then we'll just just smile and take one okay <laughs> three two one cheese one more three two one cheese awesome I thank you like, i feel like i just did like um one of those like elementary school or high school photos <laughs> and yeah where you're like trying to pose and like sit all nice yeah yeah, yeah. and they pose either like turn to the side <laughs> angle your head yeah you can all look forward to that when you get your grad photos taken um. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah, grad photos. There, yeah. yeah. I, I wish I was creative enough. Like I had some friends who brought like actual props and they were posing with it. Mine were just like standard, generic, boring photos. Um, but yeah, if you guys want cool photos, bring like whatever you're into. I have friends bringing like burritos. And oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like I don't even know. <laughs> That's so funny. We used to like bring our friends and then mm. take some pictures with your friends as well. Yeah. So. Sometimes. Well, I mean, does anyone else have any questions? If you, if you're comfortable, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, and you could always chat one-on-one -on -one or send me questions or anything like that. Um, and then same, like if you're interested in a specific field and you want to know if I have a connection, feel free to let me know. And I could definitely connect you with some of my friends who can chat with you, um, and see if there are opportunities moving forward. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, and so I think I'm sure Kellen will connect with you to get in touch with your friend. Yes. Um, I also put Diana's LinkedIn in the chat so everyone can grab it and connect with her um, in the moment, you know, cause then we don't forget to do those things later. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'd also invite anyone, um, who wants to connect with me as well. If you're interested in like on-campus opportunities, I can help you with that sort of thing. Um, but otherwise I just like to thank everyone so much for being here, for all the students joining Diana, for you giving us your time for an hour and, and sharing all of your connections and wealth of information and love for events. Um, with the group. So thank you all so much. Um, one thing I will note is you'll get an email uh, with a short survey about today's session. It's choosing smiley faces and sharing a bit of feedback. So it uh, is nice and easy to fill out. So please take a moment just to do that after the event today. And um, yeah, thank you all and have a great evening. Thank you. It was nice meeting everyone. Good luck with school. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.